And for the assignment, you will need to use these two studies and you will need to identify the population to whom the researchers were trying to generalize. You'll also need to identify how they got their sample, which is called sampling, what type of sampling was used, and then did they get an appropriate sample size? And what's the likelihood of that sample being representative of the population to whom they're trying to generalize? To help you with this, I'm going to go over the research parts in an article that a colleague of mine wrote. And uh, hopefully this will help you understand the different components. And I'll share this article, which I've annotated as well. So this particular study is looking at the relationship between graduate student statistics, self-efficacy, and statistics anxiety, attitude towards statistics, and social support. Now, most articles start out with a problem statement, like what's the issue? They're going to build a case for why we should care about this. And in this particular situation, the problem statement has to do with students being super anxious about statistics. Then we go to our purpose statement, which is the specific goal of the research that's trying to be done in this particular study. So in this study, the purpose of the study is to determine how graduate student self-efficacy to learn statistics is predicted by statistics anxiety, attitude towards statistics, and social support. They then go on to describe their dependent variable, the outcome or measure that they're trying to determine. In this case, they want to measure student self-efficacy. Now, they also introduce the theoretical orientation here, and that is Albert Bandura's theory of self-efficacy, the belief that you can do something, right? And so they've introduced both the dependent variable and the lens through which we're trying to understand this phenomenon. They go on to summarize what's in the literature for the dependent variable, and then they go on to do each one of the independent variables. Please note that they don't have uh, paragraphs that say have one author or set of authors repeated over and over and over. Instead, when you review these, you'll see that there's a good um, blending or synthesis of the literature. So instead of reporting on what each study does, which is called chunking, what they've done is they've actually identified the themes in the literature and reported on the themes instead of focusing on specific study, then the next study, then the next study. This is how you move into a graduate level writing is when you can synthesize and identify themes versus depending on talking about each individual study. All right, so they go on through and do the rest of the independent variables. Then they introduce the research questions, which are the purpose statement just reworded. But in this case, they're looking at the self-efficacy. They're looking at each one of the independent variables. And then how do all of these independent variables potentially predict self-efficacy? Then they go on to explain the method, how the study was conducted. For participants, they describe the sample, the who was in the study and the sampling, how the sample or how the participants were recruited. In this case, the faculty members at 250 universities were asked to forward the information to their students that qualified. This is called a volunteer snowball sampling. It's volunteer, hopefully no coercion, and then snowball sampling because they can pass it on. You know, if it's somebody you know that's also in that, you could pass it on. After they do that, they then got 166 graduate students. Now they needed to know, okay, is this a, an appropriate sample size? And to do that, they conducted a power analysis. And that power analysis determined that in order to have a moderate effect size, they would need to have at least 119 participants to achieve adequate power. So in this case, 166 is more than adequate for their participants. And it would also provide enough power for them to say that the findings mattered. Then they go on to describe the sample and who it can be generalized to. And they provided gender, cultural makeup, uh, educational level, uh, what type of program they're enrolled in, the accreditation status, and then a little bit about the statistics courses that they're in and the amount of time they spent there. And when I look at these, I can say, you know, this is pretty standard for a graduate counseling program to have more women than men and kind of the breakdown. This looks pretty representative of that population. If you weren't familiar with the population, you'd probably want to do a little research if they didn't give you the information in the article. 
to find out, okay, with this population, what are the normal statistics of that? So you could be a critical consumer to see, hey, is this sample really representative of the population that the uh, authors are talking about? Then it goes to how the data will be collected. It starts out with a demographic questionnaire for some of the basic characteristics they need about the classes and stuff so that they can answer some of the questions. Then they have an instrument self-efficacy to learn statistics scale, uh, which measures the dependent variable, and they've given a brief description of that with the uh, reliability and validity information to the specific population that they're trying to work with. And then they go on to talk about the instrument for each one of the independent variables. Note they didn't try to test more than what they talked about in the purpose statement of the research questions. They stayed very focused and clearly aligned with those previous statements of what they were going to do in the study. Then they talk about data analysis. In this case, they were trying to see if the three independent variables would predict the dependent variable. So in this case, because they were scaled numbers, they did a multiple regression, which was completely appropriate. Then they looked at their results, and when you're doing regression results, one of the first things you have to do is determine if there's any multicollinearity. And in this particular one that I have highlighted, these two variables, attitudes towards stats and stats anxiety, have a very high correlation. Even though it's a negative correlation, it is a high correlation, which is not surprising. Uh, makes sense, but what this tells me for someone who um, enjoys doing regression is that I would not be able to discern which one of these is contributing to um, or at what level each is contributing. I can't discern them. I can't break them apart, their effect very easily. And so what that means is I'm probably going to throw out one of these in order to really build a very solid production, prediction equation. And then they go on and you know, cover all of the demographics. Then they talk about um, statistical significance, that there was mathematically a statistical significance. And then they talk about practical significance, which is a moderate effect, which is a pretty solid effect, saying that the change in statistical self-efficacy is 52.8% um, of that can be accounted for by the independent variables. Now remember that multicollinearity, if you use both of those, you're probably overestimating your prediction. And then they go on to discuss, hey, what does this mean? Oh, one quick thing, uh, variance, that where I just talked about, does not mean causation, okay? So variance means that 52.8% of the change in the self-efficacy can be correlated or related to those variables, but they don't cause that change. So that's important to know. And then they go into discussion. So what does it mean? Why do we care about it? They link it to the literature. Where does it align with or deviate from the existing literature? And then it goes into significance. And significance is who cares about it and how and why. Then they have recommendations for future practice here for counselor educators. They talk about what the limitations of their study were, were and how they might do that differently in future research with their suggestions for future research. And then they conclude and give their references. So I hope this overview of this article was helpful to you for this coming assignment and for future assignments. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns.